everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear the old fellows tonight, here's a breakfast treat for those youngsters of yours. Horlicks malted milk powder sprinkled over the top of bread and butter, then slightly browned in the oven. Or Horlicks sprinkled right on freshly buttered toast. One of Lum and Abner's friends sent him these ideas, and she says they're delicious. They do sound delicious, don't they? Now, another thing this mother gives her youngsters is Horlicks powder sprinkled over fresh fruits and cereals. A lot of you have tried that, I know, and found the youngsters love Horlicks that way. Keep a package of Horlicks on hand, always. It's great for youngsters in whatever form they take it. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are now out of the show business. Last week, they sold their circus to Squire Skim for $1,000, only to learn later that Squire had already made a deal to dispose of it for $4,000 before he made them the offer. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum back over at Pine Ridge, down at the Jotham Down store, explaining to Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears how Squire swindled them out of $3,000. Listen. Well, Lum, you ought to know Squire Skimp well enough by this time to know that he'd give you a skinning if he got a chance. Why, sure, he probably had the animal sold to the zoo in there at the county seat before he ever offered a thousand dollars for the circus. Yeah, I found out all about it after it's too late. There weren't nothing I could do about it then. I done signed that auction business. I telephoned Abner just as quick as I found out about it, but he done signed it too. Yeah, Squire just went out of the store whenever you called over long distance, Lum. Well, that's a shame, Lum. He's just skinned you out of three thousand dollars. What he done? Well, I ought to had more sense to, to deal with Squire Skimp, knowing him like I do. But I was just anxious to get you out of the circus. I'd mind I give the thing away to somebody that had took it. Zenora was gone, and Abner had took out on me, and I was getting sort of homesick. Well, you fellas made a little money out of it anyway, didn't you, Lum? Oh yeah, we made some. This money that Abner taken and saved for us mounted to something over eight hundred dollars, and. Of course, the $1,000 that Squire paid us. Yeah. And we had something like $300 cash money on hand when they sold out to Squire. Well, good. We'll have around $1,500 in the clear after I get done settling up some of our bills. First thing I want to do is to go into the bank in the county seat there and pay off that $200 I borrowed in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd get those bills paid up and, and just put the rest of it away before somebody comes along and beat you out of it. Well, don't you worry about nobody beating us out of it, not as long as we got me. I don't like to make no brags about my own doings, but a feller's got to get up awful early in the morning to beat me in a trade. <laughs> well, Squire Skimp must be a pretty early riser then, Lum. <laughs> uh, oh, well, if you mean that deal the other day, well, that weren't my fault. See, I tried to catch Abner before he signed that option. Well, you'd already signed it, though, Lum. Yeah, but it weren't legal till both of us signed it. When Abner put his name on it, that closed the deal right there. Yeah, but I was here when Abner signed it, Lum, and the only reason he done it was because your name was already on there. He figured you know what you was doing or you wouldn't have signed it. Well, the best thing to do is just forget about it. The deal's over. Ain't no use to cry over spilt milk. Yeah, sure. Well, that ought to be a lesson to both of you. Just can't trust Squire Skimp, Lum. I believe that's our ring. Yeah, go ahead and answer, Grandpap. It's more likely somebody wants to order something and... I don't know what we've got and what we ain't got now. <laughs> yeah, it'll take you a few days to get back in the hornets here again, Lum. Uh, hello? They said got them down store. Huh? Who? Why, yeah, he's uh, sitting right here. Oh, uh, why, well, he ain't gonna do nothing to you. Come on over here. Why, he ain't no such a thing. Who is it, Grandpap? That's Abner. He's feared to come over here. Feared you'll give him a whipping. Oh, for goodness sake. Tell him to come on down here. I want to see him. Uh, Abner, Lum says to come on down here. He wants to see you. No, he don't. He... Oh, uh, he ain't going to do no such a thing. Wait a minute. I'll let you talk to him. Yeah, let me talk to him. He's scared to death. That's the reason he called up. He wanted to find out if he was here first. <laughs> let me have that receiver. Hello, Abner. This is Lum. I, uh... Hello? Hello? Granted, he must have hung up the receiver. Are you and Abner still fussing about that money that he took from a circus loan? No, we ain't fussing. He still thinks I'm mad at him over it. 
Well, why don't you tell him that you know why he did it and that you're not mad about it anymore? Well, I want to see him and thank him for it, but I can't get him cornered to do it. I've been over there to his place a half dozen times to see him, and he always hides from us. Every time I see him downtown, he strikes out for home in a dead run. <laughs> and he thinks, Lum, that you're going to give him a whipping and send him to the penitentiary. Yeah, but I said I was going to do that before you fellas explain to me why he done it, why he taken the money. Sure. Now I want to thank him for it. He just saved me and him all that money by taking it out of the safe is what he done. Why, sure he did. Um, I'd have spent every dime of it on that electric sign, but it's an or if he hadn't have did it. And I've told him time and again that you weren't mad, but he won't take my word for it. Thanks, I'm trying to help you get him cornered. Tell you what you do, Grandbab. Uh, call him over there at the house and tell him I just now left, and he'll be all right for him to come over here now. Yeah, get him on over here, Grandbab. Yeah, but he can look through them front windows and see you in here, and if he does, everybody couldn't drag him in here with a team of mules. Well, you could uh, hide till he gets on the inside here, Long. Yeah, I'll tell you what to do, Grandpap. You call him and get him on over here, and uh, when we see him coming, I can hide behind the counter till he gets on the inside, and then I'm one of you can lock the door to where he can't get out till I've had a chance to explain to him that I ain't mad at him no more. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing to do, Grandpap. Call him up and get him on over here. I'll call him up and see what he says. Well, sure. <laughs> Tell him you want to play checkers. That'll get him over here. <laughs> yeah, he'd get up at night to play checkers. <laughs> Hello? Peabody's place? Oh, uh, Elizabeth, is Abner there? Uh-huh. Well, tell him to step to the telephone, please, ma'am. Said he's playing checkers by himself. <laughs> by himself? Yeah, he's always doing that. Set and play checkers by the hours. Make out like he's playing against somebody. <laughs> and cheat, I never seen nothing like it. <laughs> Well, he ought to have no trouble winning that way. <laughs> Hello, Abner. Uh, this is Milford Spears. Yeah, Grandpap. Why, uh, Lum's gone home now. Come on over and let's play some checkers. You have. Well, Elizabeth said you was playing, but I never knowed you was playing again me. Yeah, well, come on over here and see if you can do it. Yeah, naturally you can beat me and you play playing both sides. <laughs> well, hurry. All right. Said he'd be right over. Well, good. Said he'd done beat me nine games. He'll never see the day he can do that. <laughs> well, I'm anxious to see you fellas get this misunderstanding all straightened out here. Get it all over. Yeah, I am too. I don't want him going around thinking I'm mad at him when I'm plum tickled to death over what he done. Well, I know. And you fellas are just $800 better off, too. Yeah, this is one time Abner showed better judgment than I did. I was so in love with Zenora, or thought I was, to where I sort of lost my reasoning. That broke a long record for me, too. I'm, well, I won't say just how old I am, but that's the first mistake I ever made, I reckon. <laughs> uh, there he comes. Uh, yonder he comes, coming out the front gate over there. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Well, let's see now. I better get behind that counter over there. Get him on in here and get him to talking, and Grandpap, you can sort of shy around to the front door and lock it wherever I come out. Oh, well, I don't think we'll have any trouble with him, Mom. I don't know, Dick. He's awful skittish. Yeah, he's harder to catch than a rabbit. And Granny's, I walked in Moe's Moots Barbershop Saturday afternoon, and just as I come in the front door, he went out the back, lit out for home. <laughs> Well, natural, um, you've made so many threats about what you're going to do when you did catch him, and he's not taking any chances. I guess he figures the best thing for him to do is just keep away from you as long as he can. Hey, yonder he comes. Yeah. You better get over there behind the counter, Long. He'll be where he can see in the inside here in a minute. Yeah, and I don't let him see you, Long. I don't let him see you. He won't All come right. in. You better be uh, talking about something else to where he won't get suspicious or not. Yeah, well, now, keep your head down there till Grandpa can get the door locked behind him there so we know we got him on the inside here. <laughs> There he comes. Yeah. You know, watch him looking around behind him. I reckon he's expecting Lum to jump out on him. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason he's walking so fast. It's kind of a dog trot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's been scared to death. Yeah, Richard. Oh, sure. well, well, Lum made a mistake <laughs> making so many threats. He got him scared to death. Cedric went to him and told him everything that Lum had said. <laughs> well, I told Abner Lum never meant a word of it. Well, you believe me. Yeah, well, I told him the same thing, but he just believes that Lum said he's going to whip him, he's going to whip him. <laughs> hardest headed, I mean, hardest head, hard headed fella I ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just a shame I had to have his trouble. Don't let him. Don't let him. Oh, no. Now, you go on up to the door there so you can lock it, Grandpap, and then I'll call him on back here in the store. Yeah, you just tell him to come on back here. Yeah, sure, that's what I'll do. Well, come in, Abner, come in. Well, howdy, Grandpap. 
What's that you said about beating me a game of checkers? Uh, you heard what I said. Well, howdy, Abner. Well, hello, Dick. I never know she's sitting back there. Uh, let me shut this door here. It's getting sort of chilly in here. Yeah, come on back and sit down, Abner. Yeah, much obliged. How have you been? Oh, all right. I reckon I've been staying around the place there pretty close. I never want to get out none. Me and Law ain't getting along, you know, and I, I just well, don't Well, Abner, to... I've been trying to get you cornered for a week. Oh, now. my goodness. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me get wait out Wait a minute. Here. Wait a minute. I want to talk to get you. Get out of my way, Grandpa. Get out of my way, hey, Grandpa. That door's locked, Abner. That door's locked. Now, stop him, there, Grandpa. Stop him. Well, for the land's sake, a crazy idiot. Dip right through the plate glass window. Well, the old fellows have their differences straightened out now, if Lum can just catch Abner to tell him. ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, I'd like to give a brief message to mothers of growing children. Do those youngsters of yours keep running in and out of the house asking for something to eat? Now, of course they do. It's only natural. They get hungry with all their activity. Now, I suggest that you treat them to a couple of Horlicks malted milk tablets now and then. They like Horlicks tablets. And Horlick's tablets certainly are fine for them. They satisfy, but don't interfere with appetite. They build and nourish, too. Contain all the nourishment of Horlick's in powder form. Get a package from your druggist and try the Horlick's in-between meals plan for your youngsters. You'll find other uses for the tablets, too, when motoring and golfing and on shopping trips. Horlick's tablets come in two flavors, either natural or chocolate. You'll like them both. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Dick Huddleston explained to Lum why Abner had been taking the money from the circus, Lum has been trying to see Abner and explain to him that he's no longer mad at him. Abner hasn't forgotten the threats that Lum made last week about what he was going to do to him when they met, and has therefore been keeping his distance. Well, yesterday, they devised a plan of locking Abner in the store in order that Lum might explain. But Abner dived through a plate glass window and made his escape. Lum has written Abner a letter assuring him that there's no hard feelings. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Grandpappy Spears down at the Jotham Down store. Listen. There comes Abner out there in front, Lum. Yeah, well, I reckon he got my letter. Hey, I read him last night and told him I weren't mad no more. Told him I wanted to see him. And then he's he's all bandaged up there. Yeah, I figured he must have got cut up some diving through that plate glass window the way he done. Yeah, it's a thousand wonders that never killed him. He just did right through it. Oh, he was scared. Yeah, we've got some plate glass insurance on them windows, but I don't know whether that kid was an accident like that or not. Well, I don't believe that was an accident, Rama. I believe he just jumped through there on a purpose. Yeah, that's right. May as well forget about that, I reckon. Then it looks like we can carry more insurance, not to never have the right kind to protect us with of anybody i ever seen. I never thought about nobody jumping through them windows. Oh, he must have been scared so bad he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, I'm sorry I ever threatened to give him a licking in the first place. Just look at him there. Makes me feel downright shame to myself seeing him all bandaged up that way. Yeah, his woman, Elizabeth, told Charity last night that he weren't hurt at all. She called up to see how he's getting along. Well, she must have just misunderstood Charity. He's bound to be hurt or he wouldn't have all them bandages on. Well, howdy, Abner. Yeah, howdy, man, howdy. Come in, Abner, come in. And I sort of thought you'd be down here long, and I just wanted to ask you if you meant what all you said in that letter. Why, sure, I meant it. Come on in. Don't have to stand back there in the door. 
Now, Lum ain't mad, Abner. Well, I, I'm sure proud to hear it. I, I'm tired of dodging you. <laughs> and I reckon I can take these bandages off, man. No, no, I wouldn't take them off, Abner. Oh, it, it don't hurt, Lum. <laughs> I just put them on there a while ago. <laughs> just put them on a while ago. Yeah, see, I, I figured if I wrapped myself all up in bandages and come down here to see you, and I, I never knowed whether you'd be mad or not, and I knowed if I looked like I was crippled that you wouldn't jump on me, so well, I wrapped myself all up. <laughs> For goodness sake, I'm bound for you. Yeah. I just allowed you to hurt bad. Oh, no. If no. you'd have just listened to me, I could have told you. I ain't been mad since I found out how come you to take the money from the circus. Well, Cedric told me that you said you were going to whoop me regardless of why I done it. Well, I might have said that, but that's before I found out how come you to do it. When I learned you saved us $800, I couldn't be very mad. Well, now, that's the only reason I done it. And I'm sure proud to hear you say that, too, Rob. I tell you, it, it ain't a very nice feeling knowing that your your partner thinks you're a thief. Well, to be right honest about it, Abner, I ain't been happy myself. I never spent a lonesomer week in my life. I want to apologize if there's anything I said I oughtn't to, and I want us to just shake hands and be friends. Well, fine. <laughs> well. We'll just forget about the whole thing. Uh, uh, forget about it. Yeah, we just won't bring it up no more now. Well, uh... I, I don't much want to plumb forget about it, Lum. You know, I I want to make up and all that, but half of that money belongs to me, and I don't want to forget about that. Oh, yeah, sure, the money. Well, yeah, we'll divide that. I paid off all the bills, and according to my account, we've got $1,640 left. Well... We're profits in the circus business. Well, fine, good. Now, you fellas, excuse me for butting in, but you've got business to talk over there, and I believe I'll take this order of groceries over to Sister Simpson for... She calls up for it again. <laughs> now, just you stay here in the store, Lum, till I get back. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Grand Vap. I'll look after things. Yeah, uh, uh, what you gonna do now, Lum? Just run the store here? Yeah, I reckon so. I don't know nothing else I could get into. Well, I don't either. I reckon I could just take my part of that money that we made and sort of retire myself, but I'd love to get into some kind of business if I could, or... Study up something to do. Some kind of business. Yeah. I know if I stay up around the place there, why, Elizabeth will work me to death in the field there. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'd rather get into some kind of a business where I won't have to work so hard if I could. Mm -hmm. Now, what you got in mind doing? Anything in particular? Well, no. I ain't made up my mind. I've been turning a bunch of things over in my head. It seems like there's something wrong with everything I want to go into. Yeah. I thought some about uh, putting in some kind of eating place here in Pine Ridge. Eating place? Yeah, you know, Elizabeth's got an awful reputation around the county here for her cooking, you know. Oh, yeah, Elizabeth's such a good board, I know that. Yeah, well, of course, it'd be a little bit hard on her. She's got her field work to do and all that, you know. I first thought I'd put in one of them cafeteras, you know. That's what I had in mind to do, something a little different. Put in a what? Uh, one of them, them uh, cafeterias. You know, like we seen over at Greenwood when we were with the circus, we ate there twice. Oh, cafeteria, yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know. I don't like them places to eat. Oh, it's awful handy now. Well, I know, but they charge me too much there. Don't charge you too much? Yeah. Well, I thought they had right reasonable price. Well, I didn't know, see, how they charged it first, and I went through there. I thought it was sort of family style, and I loaded up that uh, pan they give me, and... Granny, there's two dollars and eighty six cents worth of stuff. Huh? Well, you never know they charged everything separate, huh? Why no? <laughs> well, I do know. <laughs> and the next time I went through, after I found out what they done, why I might not starve myself to death. Yeah, well, somebody's got to watch that course. But me and Elizabeth got to talking it over and we decided Sister Simpson's got that boarding house of hers and then Luke Spear and his woman's got their place here and we yeah. just decided we couldn't make no money out of it. Yeah, folks around here all eat at home anyway. Yeah. And then I decided to put in a picture show. Picture show? Now, in Pine Ridge? Yes, sir. I could sit and look at them all day. Yeah, and you'd more than likely be the only one sitting and looking, too. Well, I don't know. I may be some other folks there, but... Well, I never knowed nothing about how I go about getting them, and so I got to studying around. I decided maybe it'd be better for me to put in a barber shop. Something I knowed something about. You don't know nothing about barbering. Well, no, I don't, but Elizabeth does. She cuts my hair all the time and does just as good a job as Mold Moose does. Oh, woman barber. Now, wouldn't that look funny? Elizabeth Peabody, barbarian and shampooist. Well, it looked hard if I could get her to do it, but she said she'd just set her foot down. She wouldn't budge. It 
She never had time. She had to put in a crop, and she just never had time to do it. Well, folks ain't going to let her set no crock on her head and cut around the age of it, no way. Well, no, I reckon not. And uh, she stopped on the laundry business, too. I want to put in a laundry, but she said she just had all the washing she could tend to now. Why, of course she has. She so does. I don't know what I can get into, hardly. I'll... I sort of like to be a lawyer myself, what I'd like to go into. Lawyer? Yeah, law business. You I... don't know nothing about the law business, Abner. Well, I don't have to. Don't have to? Well, I know I can buy some of them books, all them lawyer fellas. When you ask them something, they always got to look it up in the book. They don't know nothing themselves. Yeah, but you wouldn't even know where to look it up at. Well, I might not. No, I, I'd give up the law idea. Of course. This would be a good place to put in a garage here. If we had any cars here in Pine Ridge. Just got them too. They don't stay broke much of the time. No, I don't believe we'd be in there. Oh, but I wished I had me a railroad train. That's what I'd love to have. A railroad? Yes, sir, right from here to the county seat. Yeah, it'll be a good idea, but you ain't got enough money for that. You... Well, I've got over $800. Yeah, but a railroad outfit costs two or $3,000, Abner. It that's... does? Why, well, of course it does. Well I, well, I reckon I might as well forget that. I can't raise that much money. I talked to Dick Hollison about putting in a post office, but he said he already had that, and the government wouldn't allow but one in the town, so I couldn't sure get not. that. Abner, how would you like to go back in the store business? Huh? Uh, store business? Yeah, that's about the only thing you know anything about. Well, I thought some about that too long, but I just decided I never wanted to go in competition again, you and Dick both. Well, what I had in mind, I thought, <laughs> I thought maybe you... Well, I... How would you like to go in partners with me again? Uh, you mean, uh... <laughs> tearing a jot them down store? Why, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never had no idea that you'd do that. Well, why, we could take that money we made out of the circus and put in some modern improvements here and have an up-to-the-minute store. Could. Why, sure, put in some of them wire baskets that runs on them wires all over the store. Yeah? You know, when somebody buys something, you put it in a basket and it goes off summers, and when it comes back, it's all rocked hey, up. Hey, doggy, that's a sounding good one. Why, with all that money, we can have one of the finest stores there are in this part of the county. Yeah, but... Only thing, I ain't got enough money to buy no half interest in it. You nothing. don't need a cent, Abner. Instead uh -huh. of dividing that money up, twixt us, we'll improve the store with it, and you'll own a half interest in it. I will. Why, we'll be 50 50 partners, same as we've always been, if you'll just come back with me. And from here out, we're sticking to the store business. Well, it looks as though the partnership of Edwards and Peabody has been reestablished. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, I'd like to pass along a tip to the many golfers who listen to Lum and Abner. That covers quite a few of you, I know. Well, briefly, the tip is this. Take along a flask of Horlicks malted milk tablets the next time you play. They'll certainly come in handy. We all managed to work up a pretty good appetite out there on the course, and a couple of Horlicks tablets dissolved in the mouth are the best things I know of for satisfying hunger. What's more, they tend to freshen you up, just as a drink of Horlicks will. If you're planning a game this weekend, take along a flask of Horlicks and try out this suggestion. You'll find several other uses for the tablets, too. You can get them, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor at your favorite druggist. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum has been trying to devise some scheme to win Evelina back, even though invitations have been sent out for her approaching marriage with Frank Foster. Well, yesterday, upon learning of a surprise party to be given in their honor at the home of Dick Huddleston last night, Lum talked Abner into making a fake attempt to kidnap Evelina, thereby affording him an opportunity to rescue her and make himself a hero in her eyes. Well, we've not heard the outcome of the scheme, but... Uh... Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store talking over the telephone. Listen. 
hell. Elizabeth? Why, this here's Lum. Yes, Mom. How's Abner feeling this morning? Uh-huh. Well, I've always heard if you'd take and put a piece of fresh meat on your eye, that way it'd take the swelling out. You have. Well, just leave that on. That ought to help it. Oh, he is. Well, good. I'm proud he's coming over. I want to talk to him. All right, Elizabeth. Thank you, Mom. Did I hear you asking her how Abner was? Yeah, she says that uh, one of his eyes is all swollen. Well, how'd that happen? Well, ain't you heard about the fight last night? I know. Who's Abner been fighting with? Oh, him and Frank Foster had a big fight over there at Dick Huddleston's party last night. Uh, Frank liked to beat the daylights out of him. Now, of course he would. I allowed Abner to have more sense to pick a fight with a feller like that. Well, Abner never jumped on him. Frank jumped on Abner. Well, a big bully. The very idea of him picking on a little feller like Abner. Well, you can't much blame Frank over it. You see, the way it happened, uh, don't say no, nothing to nobody about this now. Oh, no. Don't nobody know about it? Well, they don't know what started it. See, me and Abner were sitting down here yesterday evening trying to study up some way I could make a hero out of myself so as Evelina would fall back in love with me. So when we found out about that party Dick's woman was given for her and Frank, why, we decided to have Abner tie a handkerchief around his face and come over there and throw a couple of guns on everybody and make out like he's going to kidnap Evelina. Well, for the land's sake. And then I was going to rush up and take the guns away from him and run him off. Evelina would think I was a hero for saving her life and fall back in love with me and not marry Frank. Well, that sounds like a pretty good idea, all right. Yeah, it sounds good. The only trouble was when Abner made out like he was going to kidnap Evelina, why Frank hauled off and knocked him down and jumped on him like to beat the daylights out of him before we could pull him off. Well, I do know. Abner never come to till after we carried him clean home. I never seen a feller get as mad in my life as that Frank did. Just over a little something like that, too. Uh, Frank never knowed it was Abner at the time, huh? Oh, no, no. He thought it was a sure enough hold-up. Women folks were screaming and taking on. Everybody was scared to death. Uh, you was the only one that knowed who it was, huh? Well, just to be right honest, I never knowed for sure it was him myself. You see, he had took and put a bunch of false whiskers on his face that I never knowed nothing about, and I didn't know it was him till I'd... Well, I'd got clean out in the kitchen. I heard him hollering for me, and I went back. Now, what was you doing running for the kitchen if you thought Evelina was about to be kidnapped? Why, well, I figured he might try to get out the back way there, and I was going to be back there to try to head him off. Well, did they all think Abner sure enough aimed to kidnap Evelina? Oh, no. After it's all over and we'd carried Abner home, I got up and told him it was just a little prank Abner was pulling on Frank and Evelina to have a little fun out of him. I told him that Abner explained it all to me after he come to. Yeah, I... Reckon Frank felt bad about it after he found out it was just a joke. Wait a minute, here comes Dick Huddleston. Don't let on to him now. I don't know anything about it at all. I don't want him to know I had a thing to do with it. No, I won't say nothing. I don't blame you, though, since it never worked out so well. Well, Abner's the one that got things mixed up by putting on that disguise to where I never know who it was. Wait a minute. Well, howdy, Dick. Howdy. Well, morning, love. Howdy, Grandpap. Yeah, howdy, Richard. How's Abner this morning? Have you heard from him? Yeah, I called up his place a while ago, and his woman said he's feeling all right, sort of bruised up a little. Got one eye all swole up. Yeah, well, I hated that mighty bad it had to happen over at my place that way. I never dreamed it was Abner till after Frank pulled those whiskers off of him. I was lined up there against the wall with everybody else. <laughs> well, he sure had everybody fooled over yeah. right. He ought to make an actor out of himself. Well, he should have let some of the rest of us in on his joke. He could have kept Frank from jumping on him that way. Why, sure. There's where he made his mistake, right there. Well, it's right funny after it's all over with. <laughs> funny to everybody but Abner. I don't think he enjoyed it very much. <laughs> uh, why didn't you and Aunt Charity come over, Grandpap? We was looking for you. Well, we did aim to, Richard. Aim to come. But directly after we cooked and had supper, uh, our daughter and her man drove over from Crystal Hill. They've got a new automobile. Yeah. Uh, they stayed till late, so we just couldn't get away. I'd love to be been there. Yeah, we had a nice time. Nice, fresh man. That's about as good a chocolate cake as I ever had. Yeah, well, I was just sorry that Abner's joke didn't turn out so well. Some of them was mad at Frank for jumping on him that way, and it just sort of put a damper on things. Well, Frank ought to know who he's jumping on, go around hitting folks that way. Well, I don't blame Frank, old um. He was just trying to protect Evelina. Can't help but admire him for that, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't admire him for nothing he done. 
It's a good thing it weren't me hit that away. It would have been trouble showing up. Well, I'm just sorry it all happened. I wanted to see Abner and tell him I feel bad about it. Well, I think he'd be down here directly. His woman said he was fixing to leave when I was talking to her just now. Yeah, well, I've got to get on back over the store, Lum. I just locked it up and left. Uh, tell Abner to come over when he gets time. I'd like to talk to him. Yeah, I'll tell him, Dave. Well, I'll see you fellas later, then. Yeah, come over and loaf with us. Uh, I want to show you the plans we've got drawn up for remodeling our store. Yeah, I want to see him, Lum. I'll be over the first chance of this. Yeah. Well, Lum, if you're going to be here for a little spell, I'll take that batch of groceries on over to the Witter Abernathy. Yeah, go ahead, Grandpa. I'll stay here. I ain't finished filling the order yet. Some stuff she wanted here we ain't got. We're clean out our bacon powders. Well, I better put that down on the list, then. I've got to order some stuff next time golf drummers out here. Needing some stick blueing and vinegar. They be calling for vinegar now that their garden sasses start coming in. Yeah, Uncle Henry Lunsford called for it yesterday. Better get some lamp wicks, too. Abner used that last one we had to put in his hat band to make his hat fit him. You know, when he got that haircut the other day. Well, we'll go over the stock and make out a list for what all we need. Some of the stuff we're out of, we can just substitute. Like, uh, wait a minute. Here comes Abner. Well, Dick already waited. Yeah? Well, he don't feel pretty good. You can tell the way he's poking along there. Yeah, I hope he don't think that's my fault the way things turned out last night. Can't help but feel a little bad about it, only kind of being my idea to start with. Well, Dick never seemed suspicion that you had anything to do with it, Lom. No, nobody never asked me, and of course I never said whose idea it was to start with. Well, Heidi Abner, how you feeling? Don't speak <laughs> to me. I don't want to have a thing to do with you. Well, now, here, don't start blaming me for what happened last night. It was your own fault. My fault? Why, sure it was. Well, I'd like to know how you figure that. You're the one that put me up to it. Well, yeah, it was my idea for you to go in there and make out like you was going to kidnap Evelina, but I never knowed you was going to put on them whiskers and all that stuff to where I wouldn't know you. Hatty face. Hatty face. You got a pretty bad looking eye there, Abner. Black as a hat. Yeah, this big lummox here stood there and let Frank Forster jump on me and beat me half to death. Well, Abner, I told you I never knowed for sure it was you. I wasn't going to jump out there and start no fight with a sure enough robber and him with two guns in his hand. Well, that's what Frank done. Yeah, I know it. Folks are bragging on him how brave he was. Yeah, that's the last time I ever try to help you. Next time you want to try to make a hero out of yourself, you can get somebody else to help you. Well, I'm the one that ought to be mad. You were supposed to be over there to make a hero out of me, and you made one out of Frank Foster instead. I'm worse off now than I was before it happened. I would have known you couldn't do nothing right. Leave it to you to get things mixed up. Well, I done it just like you told me to. I never told you to put all them whiskers on yourself to where I wouldn't know you. Well, I couldn't go over there looking like I do ordinary. Everybody knowed it was me when I walked in the door there. Well, why didn't you tell me you was going to put them on? Well, I never thought nothing about it till I got over to the place last night. Leave that fire ring, Lum. Want me to answer you, Peggy? Yeah, go ahead, Grandpa. Try to blame it on me. That blame disgusted. I don't want to talk to nobody. Have a good idea and Abner get things messed up to where I never will have a chance with Evelyn or him. I never knowed you to do nothing right, Abner. Well, I told you don't lay it on to me. They got them down, store. It wasn't my fault. Yes, Ma. It's trying to shift it yes, off. Yes, Mommy, my just now come in. All right, hold the receiver. Here, Abner, some woman wants to speak to you. Some woman? Well, <laughs> she never said who it was. Here. Hello? Yes, Mom? Why, well, tolerably well, thank you. Uh huh. Well, now, that's all right. It weren't your fault. I ain't blaming you a bit. You did? Well, now, if I can do anything to help patch things up, well, let me know. Oh, you don't? Uh, well, no, ma'am, I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor little thing. Poor little thing. I sure hate to hear that. What's the matter? Who, who was it? My was Evelina. Evelina? Yeah, I just feel downright mean about what I did, Lum. She said that she bawled Frank out for beating me up last night, and they got in a big argument, had a fuss, and called her wedding off, and ain't going to get married now. Well, for goodness sake, Abner, I know I could depend on you. You've saved the day for me. That's what you did. <laughs> I granted, this worked out better than I had it planned to start with. Abner, you're a genius. And Evelina ain't going to marry Frank after all. I'm going to call her. Yeah, it looks like the scheme worked fine for everybody, except Abner.
Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of our listeners have tried the breakfast plan that I mentioned the other night. Remember? A glass of Horlicks malted milk hot in the place of tea or milk or coffee. Besides being a delicious welcome change, Horlicks makes a fine, healthful beverage for young and old alike. A valuable addition to the diet. That's because of the vitamins and minerals that this famous malted milk contains. In addition to that, Horlicks is so much easier to digest that it keeps you feeling cheerful and alert all day. It agrees with the weakest stomach. So if you haven't any Horlicks in the house, get a package now from your druggist. Then start the day right, the Horlick way. You'll find many other uses for Horlicks also. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the wedding of Evelina and Frank Foster has been definitely called off. And Lum is taking advantage of the situation by courting Evelina right off her feet. <laughs> her romance with Frank Foster just made the old fellow realize how much he really cared for her. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jot'em Down store talking with Lum and Abner. Listen. Yeah, I believe me and Evelina's more in love with one another now than we ever were. <laughs> well, it looked like old times to see you two out there meeting together yesterday, Lum. <laughs> well, sir, my and I, everybody said that. Any number of them come up to us again, services was over, and told us how proud he was to see us keeping company with one another again. <laughs> oh, I don't think nobody wanted to see her marry Frank Foster in the first place. I reckon that's the reason they're glad. Oh, that'd been the biggest mistake she ever made. Well, Lum, um, that sort of leaves it up to you now. You kept her from marrying Frank. You better get busy before somebody else tries to take her away from you again. Yeah, I think me and her will be getting married for long now. I've got to get me a diamond engagement ring from her. Well, now, she give Frank his ring back. Why don't you just buy that and offer him? I bound you'd sell it pretty cheap now. And Granny, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. Well, I doubt if Frank could sell it to you, Lump, if he knew what you wanted with it. Yeah, he's just mean enough to try to charge me two prices for it. Yeah, he's just like him. You ought to have told Evelina not to give it back to him for what you ought to did. Yeah, I'm not worrying about that. I can get her a ring, all right. I'm going to get her a solid 14-carat diamond. That'll make that little ring he give her look like two cents. Yeah. Well, man, I've got to get on back over the store. I left the wife to look after things, and she's got to take out and go to the house and do the washing. Yeah, well, I'm glad you stopped by, Dick. Yeah, come back again, Dick. Much obliged for bringing the mail over. Yeah. Well, that's all right. I'll come by here anyway. Yeah, Dick seemed to like the plans we got for remodeling our store, didn't he? Yeah. I believe that was a good subject he made there, though, about putting all the groceries on one side of the store and all the dry goods on the other line. Yeah, only trouble it'll be a nuisance walking backwards and forwards that way. It'd be about my luck to be standing over on the grocery side and somebody come in and want some dry goods, yeah. dress pattern or something like that. Then I'll have to walk clean across the store to wait on them. Yeah, like you said, though, it don't look right to have canned goods and shoes stacked right up on the shelf together that way. No, but I still say it's a heap handier that way. Wish we could run their store sort of like one of them cafeterias where we head over at Greenwood. You mean put a eating place in here? No, but let everybody wait on themselves. They could go around and pick out what stuff they wanted, and me and you could stand up there at the front door and search them and take their money as they go out. Yeah, but supposing they go out the back door. Yeah, that's right. Looks like he's all or something. Wait a minute. Who's that driving up out there in front? Oh. Huh. Stranger to me. Yeah, I don't believe I even know the horse. Uh, he, he's a dressed-up sort of a feller, ain't he? Yeah, more like that drama is what he is. Well, he's just wasting his time calling on us, and for we ain't buying nothing till we get this store remodeled. Ain't got no place to put the stuff if it was to buy. Yeah, come in, sir. Come right in. Yeah, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, I just wonder if you uh, gentlemen could tell me where the old uh, Phil Robinson place is located. Oh, Robinson place? Yes, uh... I believe that's the name, Robson. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he means the old Uncle Phil Robson place, haven't they? Up there on Brash Creek. Oh, yeah, more like that. Yeah, it's the Phil Robson place. I believe that is what they call it. Well, I can tell you where it's at, but there ain't nobody lives there. That farm's laid out now for about ten years. House is burned down and everything. Yes, I understand it, Ed. Well, I wanted to look at it. I was thinking of building a summer home out there, kind of a mountain lodge. Lodge? Yeah, well, of course, it's your own business, but... I don't believe you'll do no good with a lodge way out there. Most of us fellas around here belongs to the woodman of the world anyway. No, no, no. I mean to fix the place up. Bring my family out here during the summer. They tell me there's some beautiful scenery around there. 
Yeah, well, I don't know where I'd say that or not. You can't see much of anything for the dead blame mountains out there. But if you want to go ahead out there, well, I can tell you how to go. Yeah, just follow that road right out there in front of the store till you get to the southeast corner of Uncle Henry Lunchford's fence. Well, he don't know where Uncle Henry Lunchford's place is, Abner. Oh, no, that's right. Well, it's the first place you come to on the right after you pass Ham Douglas is there. Yeah, well, Abner, this gentleman is a stranger. He don't know where Ham Douglas lives. Oh. I'll tell you what you do, mister. Just follow that road out there for about four mile and a quarter. You'll come to a fork. Now, the right-hand fork will take you down through the Hogjaw Valley and over in the Crystal Hill settlement. Yeah. But you don't want to go that way if you're looking for the old Robinson place, or that road bears sort of south. You want to go north, so you take the left-hand fork. Or just ask any of them houses along there, or ask the folks in them, rather. They they can tell you where where they live at. Oh, yeah, yeah, they all know where it's at. Now, you might have to ford the river. It it appears to me that I heard somebody say that bridge had washed out down there. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I think I can find it. Oh, yeah, you won't have no trouble. Yeah, I hope you decide to locate here. And if you do, don't forget you've got a complete line of uh, might not anything in the way of merchandise right here. Yeah. That is, except stick bluing and lamp wicks. I believe we're out of them right now. Yeah, but by the time he gets a house built and moved in, we ought to have one. Yeah. My granny, that's a right pretty ring you're polishing up there. Hmm. Is that a solid diamond? Oh, yes, yes, that's a three-carat stone. Yeah, that stone we've had in our family for several generations now. Well, a fella would never know it. It just sparkles just like a brand new one. Yeah, I'm going to get Evelina a 14-carat solid gold one. Yeah. Of course, you don't know Evelina, but her and me's liable to get married just any day now. She's single, too. Yeah, her, her and Mom's got up a case. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen, for the information. I'll have to be going. Yeah, not at all, not at all. Yeah, come in again. Yeah, I hope you're okay here. Well, thank you. <laughs> he's a right nice fella, aren't he? Yeah, I hope he does move in here. But I can tell by looking at him, he's got money. Oh, yeah. I yeah, bet he's richer than bottom land. We need folks like him here in the community. Well, yeah. I wouldn't mind to join up with that lodge he's talking about putting in, but I know Elizabeth never would let me out long enough at night to go clean out there to meet and wouldn't do me no good to join up. Well, I don't think that's the kind of a lodge he's talking about, Abby. Huh? Must have been something else besides the wood. He said lodge. That's what he said. Wait, wait, I wait, heard him. Wait a minute. Huh? What's wrong out there? Looks like he's lost something. Yeah. Must have dropped something in the road there. Hey, we ought to help him look for it. Yeah, come on. Let's go out there and see if we can help him. Yeah, he's such a nice fella. I, I wish me and him was kin to one another. Yeah, he sure lost something, all right. Well, he's scratching around there in the sand there. Yeah, what's the matter? Did you lose something? Why, yes. I just started across the road here to get in the buggy, and I dropped the diamond out of that ring I was just showing you. Well, I do know where. Well, mm, that'll be hard to find there in that sand. Yes, it will. You sure you wrapped it right there? Yeah. Well, I had my handkerchief out, polishing it, and just happened to notice it was gone. Well, it ought to be around here summer, then. We'll find it shortly. Yes, I hope so. But I wanted to get out and look at that farm this afternoon. I've got to be back in Mina in time to catch that 7 o'clock train. Yeah, well, now, we'll find it. Don't you worry. Yeah, now, now don't worry. I- I'll run in there and get a flower sifter out of the store. Yeah, yeah. Our grannies, we'll sift every bit of this sand out here till we do find yeah, it. Yeah, that's the thing to do. We'll locate it. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I've just got to going out to that farm, made a special trip out here to see it. I can come back by here, and if you found it, I'll be glad to pay you for it. I'll give whoever finds it two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars? Well, we'll find it and uh, turn this road upside down as one. Well, I hope you do. I'll be back sometime this afternoon. I appreciate you helping me out this Not way. at all, not at all, no. no. Get up, uh, get up. Now, don't you worry now. We'll find it. You just go right ahead and look at the farm. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, I brung two sisters. Well, where's he going? Did you find it? Uh, no, Lama. He said he had to get on over there and look at that farm, but... He's going to give $200 to whoever finds it for him. $200? Yes, sir. That's just what he said. Give me one of them sifters here. <laughs> I told you he had a lot of money. Let me get to looking here. Oh, that gummit. Here comes Squire Skim. No, let's don't let on to him. Uh, let him know what it is that uh, he's lost. You know, he'd about keep it. That's just about oh, what it happened. Yeah, that fella never said, but I... Bound you that diamond's worth a thousand dollars, bound you. Yeah, yeah. I don't let on to Squire now, whatever you do. No, don't tell him what we're looking for, for he's a kind of a feller who'd try to beat somebody out or something. Why, so? I got over the way he did it on that circus deal. No, sir. Me neither. Just doubt what he do is keep it for himself. Bought the circus for a thousand dollars and sold it for four thousand. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good Thank evening. You. Howdy, Squire. Yeah, what's going on here? You lost something? I, well, yeah. What'd you think we're doing, making mud pies? Well, uh, maybe I can help you here. I've got mighty good eyes. Uh, now, what is we're looking for now? No, nothing much. If you... No. 
find anything, why, well, just let us know. We're just looking. Thought I lost something here a minute ago. Well, I'll declare. Well, looky here. Huh? I picked this up the first thing. It looks like a diamond here. Let's see that, Well, squire. I'll be dead blame. That's just what we're looking for. I'll give you $10 for that, Squire, right now. Not ask no questions. Oh, no, no. I, well, I couldn't think of it, Lum. Uh, this stone here is worth a lot of money. You can tell that. I know it, but I want to get it back for this friend of mine. It's yeah. his, and I don't want it for myself. I'll give you $25 for it. I don't get I'll give you $50 for it. 75 Well, give me $100, and I'll turn it over to you. The first one that gives me $100 can have this. <laughs> well, it looks like the old fellows might get back a part of that money that Squire beat them out of in the circus business. everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. The dictionary defines an imitation as that which is made to resemble something. Well, that just about describes most imitations of Horlicks malted milk. They only resemble Horlicks. For quality and results, they do not begin to equal it. For one thing, Horlicks was the first. The original malted milk. It was discovered 50 years ago by Mr. William Horlick and has since then been recommended by physicians all over the world. It contains rich, full cream milk combined with extracts of the finest wheat and malted barley. From the very beginning, Horlick's enjoyed a tremendous popularity. A popularity which in a few years was to circle the world. Of recent years, many imitations have appeared on the market resembling Horlicks, the original. But none of them could match this famous malted milk, either for quality or results. Today, as always, Horlicks is the leader. That's why, if you want the best, you should insist on Horlicks malted milk. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. After Lum and Abner paid Squire Skimp $100 on two different occasions for finding the diamond that was lost in Pine Ridge the other day, the old fellows returned it to the stranger who lost it, only to find out that it was an imitation. And they failed to collect the reward. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store, where the main subject of conversation is still about the fake diamond. Listen. Well, let's quit talking about it. It's done over now, and just forget it. Well, I can't forget about it. Every time I try to forget it, that makes me think of it again. Well, I'm tired of hearing your mouth about it. Every time I think about Squire beating us out of $200, I get so dead blame mad I could go right over to his place and give him a licking. Well, go on over there and give him a licking, then, if that'll make you feel any better. Well, that ain't going to get our money back, whipping Squire. Why, of course not. Well, I don't see no use to go over there and start a fight with him, man. Well, I never told you to give him a whooping. You did, too. You just now said for me to go on over there and do it. Well, yeah, I said that, but I just... Well, don't... I don't think it looked right, me being the constable here, supposed to uphold the law, going around starting fights with folks. Why, of course not. Well, what you trying to get me to do it then for? Why don't you do it yourself if you want him whipped so bad? I never said nothing about wanting him whipped. You was the one that kept talking about going over and giving him a whooping. Yeah. Let's just forget about it. You wouldn't be no match for Squire, no how. He'll weigh 200 pounds. Why, of course he will. A big bully. Why don't he jump on somebody's side if he wants to fight? Picking on me because I'm little than he is. Why, he ain't trying to start no fight with you. No, he better not, neither. I'm just mad enough right now to go over there and beat the everlasting daylights out of him. Well, go on over there, then, and do it. Quit talking about it. There you go, trying to act me into it again, Lum. I thought we argued that out just now. Well, we did, but you just keep saying that you want to fight, Squire. Go on fighting. Yeah, but I don't think you ought to let me do it. That ain't going to get us no further. Well, it ain't none of my business what you do. You ought to be old enough to look after yourself for this time. Yeah. I don't believe I'll go. Maybe I can quit being so mad. You know, that's my trouble. I just fly off the handle. Lose my temper too quick. Get me mad and I don't know what I'm doing. Hardly. Well, 
if you keep thinking about how big Squire is, I don't think you'll have no trouble controlling yourself. No. Uh, and it's a good thing he ain't here right now, I'll say that. Yeah, it sure is. That explains him. How far is it over to his place? Well, you know how far it is. You've been over there a thousand times. See his house from here. There it sits, right over there on the hill, yonder. Yeah, but now hit the heat farther than it looks, Mama, the way that road circles around there. Well, take that shortcut through the field over there, then. Oh, I don't know, no. Now, that's awful low ground through there. I- I'm feared it'd be awful muddy through there after that rain we had last night. Well, go around the road, then. Well, there ain't no use to go clean around the road when you can cut across that field, yonder. Yeah, but you said the field was muddy. Well, it is. Oh, for goodness sake, Sam. And if I have to go clean around the road there, why, it'll take me too long. I, I don't believe I can stay mad that long. Might get over there and... I wouldn't be mad no more, and he would, and then what would I do? I don't know. Reckon I could take along a present of some kind. A present? Yeah, what'd be nice to give for? To give him? Yeah, some kind of a nice present. I wish it was Christmas. Uh, reckon when his birthday is. What you talking about giving him a present for? I thought you were going to give him a whooping. Yeah, well, I was going to, but, uh, well... We're so busy here. Maybe I better not leave a store alone. Well, we ain't busy. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I can look after things for myself. Grandpapa will be back directly, anyhow. Yeah, that blame it. He's all showing up right at the wrong time. Well, go on over there if you're going. I thought you wanted me to forget about it. I do. We've got to decide on them plans for remodeling the store here. Well, you'll need me here at the store then, won't you? Why, sure. Well, good for you. <laughs> Yeah, let's quit talking about Squire. Yeah. Every time I get to thinking about it, I get so dead blame mad. I could go right over to his place and beat the everlasting daylight out of it. Oh, now, oh, wait a minute. You need to hear the story, don't you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, ain't no use to keep talking about it, Abner. We was lucky to get out of that diamond deal easy as we did. Oh, yeah. Lost $200, but that's better than it would have been if we'd have had to pay that fellow $1,000 for that diamond he lost. We can thank Grandpap for that. Yeah, well, Grandpap just beat me to it. I'd just fix and run him out of the store myself. Yeah. You, you about like me. You believe the whole story. May as well admit to it. We'd have both paid him the money if it hadn't been for Grandpappy Spears. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so. But I was awful mad, though. I know that. I know I was mad. I recollect that. Yeah. Well, the thing that scared that fellow off when Grandpa threatened to call the sheriff out here from the county seat. Yeah, yeah, that's what done it. <laughs> <laughs> he never wanted to get up mixed up with no sheriff. I know, he? sir. Everybody could tell he's a fear to face the sheriff here. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that, that shows he was a crook right there. Why, sure. And Squire's bound to have been in cahoots with him all along through that low-down Squire Smith. Of course he was. Of course, but proving it's another thing. We say he was, and he said he wasn't. So what you gonna do? Mom, I'm going over and get... Oh, oh, that's right. Well, Grandpa says he's going to get that $200 back for us anyhow, Mom. Uh, what about the damn plans you're talking about? Right here. Yeah. Right here. Let's see them Proud plans. to see you interested again. Yeah. He's talking about giving Squire a whooping. Just forget about that. Now. Well, I'm trying to forget it. I keep reminding myself every time I think to forget it, I think to start it over again. Now, here, I was talking to Ezra Seastrunk this morning. He says he'll do the carpenter work here in the store for $100. $100. Yeah. Well, Ed is right handy with the saw and hammer, all right. He's always laid out here at their casket makings ever since I can read the last in Pine Ridge. Yeah, only trouble, Ed can't read or write, and he couldn't tell nothing about these plans I've got drawn up here. Oh. Well, I, I wouldn't hold that again, Ed long. You showed them plans to my eye. Everybody's come in the store here, and so far, you're the only one that can tell anything about them. Yeah, uh, looks like I'm about the only architect around here. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, Lob. What's uh, the matter? Uh, Squire, look, he's coming in here, Squire. Still. Yeah, good. Uh-huh. Now you won't have to go over there to give him that whooping. Who? <laughs> Quit who? Why are you talking about going over there and giving him a whooping a while ago? Yeah, but but don't you know, Lob, we decided I better not do that, you know. <laughs> Old Squire don't know what he's walking into. Now, Lob, <laughs> don't you let me start no fight with him now. If, if I get to saying a batch of stuff I ought to, why, you just make me hash up. Tell Squire I don't mean it. No, sir, I'm going to tell Squire every last word you say. Now, don't you do it now, Lob. <laughs> I was mad when I done that. I get mad. I don't know what I'm saying. I ain't responsible. Well, all, all right, Ed. Right, just got no, you. don't tell him, but I, I don't think I'm in it. No, neither one of us don't want to act mad. No, that's the time. Yeah, fool him, won't we? <laughs>
Well, <laughs> what I mean by that, I'm going to try to figure out some way to get even with him. And if he knows we're mad about it, why, well, he's going to be watching us awful close. Why, sure. I want to thank him. I want him to think that we forgot about the whole incident. Yeah, yeah, that's a time. <laughs> Uh, well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, hello, Squire, old boy. Come here. <laughs> well, how are you today, Squire? Why, all right, I guess, Lum. How are you, gentlemen? Oh, just only tolerably, sort of down with the rheumatism again. Yes, well... Sit down, Squire, sit down. No, no, thanks, Lum. I can't stay yet. <clears throat> just dropped by here, I heard some bad news about you fellas. Bad news about us? Well, uh, yes. Uh, somebody was uh, telling me that uh, that stranger, you know, uh, uh, refused to give you the two hundred dollars reward for that diamond ahead that you found. I just heard it a while ago. Yeah. Well, he claimed it was a fake. Yeah, that's what he said. Said it wasn't the one he lost to. Yes. Well, that's what I heard. That's too bad, sure. I just hope that uh, you men don't think that I had anything to do with it. Oh, no, Squire. No, I hadn't no. done nothing about that. Oh, no, that never entered our heads at all, Squire. Of course no. not. Well, uh, just to prove to you that I want to do what's right, I'm going to give you men your $200 back. You mean you would Rather than to have you think for one minute that Squire Skimp would be two of his best friends out of $200, I'll gladly give you the money back and take the diamonds. Or, uh, that is the stone that I told you we thought was a diamond. Mm, well, I don't know what to do, hardly, Squire. It's such a well, I tell you, man, I'll make it $300, not a cent more. That's my top price, $300. $300. Doggy, Lom, can't you talk? Tell him he'll take it before he bats out. Sure we'll take it. If you want to do it, recollect it's your own proposition. No. Well, uh, have you got the diamond, Lum? Oh, yeah. yeah. Grandpap took it into the county seat for me Saturday and had it set in a ring for me. Uh, yes, that's what he was telling me. See, I was aiming on giving it to Evelina for a engagement ring. But, of course, if you want to give me $300, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, give us some money, sure. All right, doggy squire, that's sure fair, I'll say that. I know all along that you'd do the right thing about it. <laughs> I was just telling Lum a while ago I was aiming on giving you a nice present. <laughs> Wasn't I, Lum? Shut up, Evelyn. Well, uh, here you are now, Lum. Uh, there's uh, 20 and uh, 40 and 60 and 80, 100, 120. Now, this certainly does not sound like Squire Skin. <laughs> Something wrong. take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Next time you're in the drugstore, look for the Horlick name at the fountain. When you see it, you can be sure that that druggist believes in giving his customers the best of everything. Its presence there shows him to be a good judge of quality and serves as an indication of his high standard of selection. Not only of malted milk, but of all drugs and cosmetics he sells. He knows that for quality, for real wholesome nourishment, for results, no cheap imitation compares with Horlicks, the original malted milk. So next time you're in your drugstore, remember to look for the Horlick name at the fountain. If you don't see it, ask your druggist to get Horlicks for you in the interests of your own and your family's health. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, just as Lum and Abner were confident that Squire Skimp had beaten them out of $200 on that fake diamond deal, Squire came in the store and gave them $300 for the diamond back. Well, they can't seem to figure out this sudden burst of generosity on the part of the Squire. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at their Jotham Down store making final plans for remodeling the store. Listen. Well, now, 
Now, here's the figures that Esri gave me this morning. Yeah. New counters and shelving, putting in the show windows, remodeling the front of the store, putting an addition on the feed room, and painting the inside and outside both all comes to uh, $400. $400, huh? Yeah, of course, that ain't including the basket system. He says he figures that'll run about $300 by itself. Just for the basket system? Yeah, that's for the balcony and everything. Well, couldn't we get along without the balcony and all? Looks like to me we got plenty of room in here without one of them. Oh, where are you going to run the baskets to? Well, I don't know. I don't know nothing about them things. Why, you saw them in there at Mina. All them department stores have got them. Why, yeah, I saw them, but I can't see what we need them for. Well, if we're going to have an up-to-date store here, we're going to have to have all them newfangled proof men. People folks will be coming in here buying stuff just to see them baskets run along them wires. I know I've did that. Well, why do we have to have the balcony for them? Why don't we just rot them back there in a the feed room and rot the stuff up back there and send it back? No, no, that wouldn't look right. It's got to go upstairs. Get to running them baskets down low that way, somebody get their head knocked off. Yeah, it just sounds sort of foolish to me. What you used to send all that stuff up to the balcony and then go climb the stairs and rot it up and... All you'd have had to do in the first place is just hand it to him. Oh, we won't have to go up there and rock stuff up. Grandpapa will stay up there all the time, tend to that. Well, that's just that much more expensive. Mm, it costs money, all right, but it'll be the talk of the town. Yeah, but, Lom, we ain't going to have enough money to do all them things. We buy them wax women to put them dresses on for the show windows and get that water cooler and cash register. Why, we ain't going to have no money left to buy merchandise with you don't want to have a brand new store here with a batch of empty shells in it. Danny, that's right. I'd forgot about how low our stock's getting. Another thing, I don't believe we need Grandpappy Spears no longer. He ain't earning his salt around here. Why, he's delivering the groceries, opening up and sweeping out of the morning. Why, well, yeah, the but coming. one of us just as well as to be doing that, Ma. We ain't got enough business here to keep one man busy, much less three of us. Yeah, things have been uncommonly quiet for some reason or other, just here of late. Might be on account of our stock being so low. Well, why don't you just tell Grandpa that we'll have to let him go till things sort of pick up a little? Oh, I don't know. I've been laying off to do it for a week, but just can't bring myself to tell him. You know how mad he gets. He sort of tells you about things like that. I know he'd just fly right off in the handle. Well, I'll tell him. Lord, me, there ain't no use to keep him if we don't need him. Well, I wish you would. But put it in a nice way, Abner. We don't want to hurt his feelings. Mm. Pretty hard to figure out a nice way to fire anybody, though, huh? It looks to me like he could see he ain't needed around here and just up and quit. Well, now, uh, he won't do that. Long as we pay him, why, well, he'll stay right here. I'll just tell him we don't need him no longer. Can't afford to pay him. But if he wants to work for nothing, why, well, it's all right with us. Yeah, that's the thing to tell him. He's been so nice, I just hate to let him go. Well, I do know. There comes Dick Hutterson. Well. <laughs> yeah, well, he called up while ago and said he had some mail for us. Said he'd bring it over. Hey, did you tell him about Squire giving us our money back? Yeah, he was tickled from to death. Why? Yeah, sort of like I am, though. I still don't understand how come Squire to do it. Uh, well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, hello, Dick. Well, how are you fellas today? Oh, all right, I reckon. <laughs> it's mighty thoughty of you to bring them letters over for oh, us. Oh, that's all right, Lom. I'll come by here anyway. Here. Yeah, much obliged. Hey, what do you know about old Squire giving us three hundred dollars for that imitate diamond? Well, I didn't know what to think about that, Abner. It don't sound like Squire to me. Must be some trick to it someplace. Well, I don't know. We've got the money. Three hundred dollars in cash. <laughs> Dog is he can pull all them kind of tricks on us he wants to. <laughs> well, I can't figure it out. I never knew Squire to give anybody anything before. But Maybe he's had a change of heart here all of a sudden. Can't tell. Granny, this is that catalog I ordered from them store fixtures. Uh, what? Store fixtures. Showcases and stuff like that. Oh. Here's some wax models in here. <laughs> Granny, them look like real women folks, don't they? Let's see. You gonna get some models, Lum? Yeah, I thought we'd get a half a dozen or so of them. Sort of stand them around the store here. Put some of them in the show windows. It looks like we've got a big crowd in here to get all them standing around. <laughs> Folks will be passing by and think there's a sale going on in here. Well, for the land sake, look at that in there. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Look at the way she's standing there. What, she got her hand stuck out that way for her. Looks like she's holding out her hand to see if it's raining or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's to hang pocketbooks and stuff like that on. Hey, she ain't a bad looker, is she? No, let's get her on. 
Hey, look at this in here, though. If you want to see something, look here, Dick. Granny, she'd run the customers off. <laughs> Looks like a hank. Well, that's some of that modernistic stuff. <laughs> that's the latest thing, you know. Might be the latest thing, but I don't want to have that thing sitting around the store here and looking at it all day long. Hey, here, let me look at it a while, Lom, and I'll, I'll mark the ones I like in there. Yeah, I want to read this letter here. Looks like it might be something important. Wrote with a typewriter. Well, fellas, I've got to get on back. I want to go by Grandma Matthews. She's got a letter here from her boy in the Navy, and I know she'll be anxious to hear from him. Oh, from Wilbur, huh? Yeah, and yeah, he don't write very often, neither. If he knew how happy it made her to get a hearing from him, why, he'd write her every week. Yeah, I know. She talks about him all the time. Well, I never take a letter over there but what she wants me to sit down right there and read it to her. Yeah. And she'll sit there with big tears running down her cheeks. Calls him baby all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he ain't never growed up to her. No, no. Still worries and frets over him just like he was a young man. Why, sure. Well... I'll see you fellas later, then. Come down low with me. Yeah, we will, Dick, and much obliged for fetching over the letter. Yeah, come back again, Dick. I reckon who this could be from. I don't know nobody from Denver, Colorado, that I know of. Denver? Yeah. Uh, I thought your uncle lied, Jedders, went out there to look for a silver mine a long time ago. I granny, that's right, he did. I, I'd forgot about Why, that. Why, sure. Yeah, he was sort of the black sheep. Well, that's just about who that's from. Well, he must have struck it rich then, for this road with a typewriter. Well, yes, sir, I'll bound you that's who it is. <laughs> he was my favorite uncle, Uncle Lige was. He was? Yeah, I hope he found a silver mine. Wouldn't that be fine now? Well, go <laughs> ahead and open it up. You can't tell nothing but looking at the hand bell affair. Yeah, more than likely wanting to give me a half interest in a mine to come out there and run it for him about what he wants. Reckon you could look after the store here by yourself. Well, Danny, this is from a whole batch of folks. Well, uh, maybe the whole family wrote you, now. Well, maybe this is a board of directors. Well, read it and see who it is. Well, it's uh, sort of blurred here. Must have used a carving paper on it. Says, uh, dear friend. Yeah. Well, <laughs> somebody knows me all right. Yeah, yeah. This charm was started in the hopes of bringing prosperity to me. Yeah. Within three days, make five copies of this letter, leaving off the top name and address, and adding your name and address at the bottom of the list, and give it to five of your friends. What in the world are they talking about here? Well, that don't sound like no silver mine to me. No. In omitting the top name and address, be sure and send that person a dime ten cents. Oh, a dime ten cents. Wrapped in paper as a charity donation. Wow. In turn, as your name leaves the top, you should receive 15,625 letters Ooh, with, with donations amounting to $1,562.50. Well, granny. Well, what kind of business is that your Uncle Elijah's got himself into anyway? I don't know. I can't make no sense out of it. Sound to me like he wanted you to send him a dime out. Now, here's a whole batch of names. D.E. Wilson, Denver, Colorado. And L.E. Graham, Denver, Colorado. Wow. C.V. Oldham, Denver, Colorado. And, uh, again, they're all from Denver. Well, and uh, they all want you to send them a dime? Wait a minute. Here, here comes Grandpappy Spears. Don't say nothing to him about this letter, Abner. I've got to figure this thing out somewhere. Yeah, I'll just I'd put like it up. i to find out more about that myself. Now, don't let on. Maybe he'll leave directly. Well, I'll just fire him right now. That'll get him out of here. Now, do it as nice as you can. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to be nice about it, sure. Now, yeah, sir, I just seen Squire Skimp a minute ago, and I never feel seen a feller so mad in my life. Yeah, uh, sit down here, Grandpap. I want to talk to you. What's Squire mad about? Why, well, I'm mad about that diamond you feller sold him for $300 yesterday. Mad about it? Well... Yes, he's awful tore up. He's down to the barbershop just uh, talking about it. Well, I do know. Well, it was his own proposition. We never tried to sell it to him. He come over here and said he felt bad about the way he'd been treating us and wanted to do the right thing about it. That's just what he said. Well, he says he's going to try to make you fellas give him that money back. Give it back? Yeah. Uh, I may as well tell you fellas now. <laughs> I don't want you to think I was buttoning into your business, but... Uh... Lum, you know when you give me the diamond to take it into the county seat and have it set in a ring for you so you could give it to Evelina? Yeah. Well, the gentleman says it weren't nothing but a piece of glass, but I come back and told Squire I had examined, and the gentleman said it was worth $1,200, and Squire believed it. Well, what's he wanting his money back for, then? Well, uh, he'd taken it in there to try to sell it today, and the gentleman told him just what he told me, that it weren't nothing but a piece of glass. Well... <laughs> My grannies, I see through the whole thing now. 
That's the reason he come over here and give us three hundred dollars for it. Just <laughs> Grandpa, you've got a job here in this store just as long as you want it. I grant as anybody can get ahead of Squire Kemp. Yes, anybody that can get the best of Squire Kemp will be a valuable asset to Lum and Abner. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go any further, I'd like to explain why Horlicks malted milk is so universally recommended as a food for growing children. For one thing, Horlicks is rich in calcium and phosphorus and the other minerals essential for the building of strong bones and sound, healthy teeth. That's one reason why so many medical and child-feeding authorities say that Horlicks should be a part of every youngster's diet. Then again, Horlicks is a fine source of vitamins. Vitamins that build husky bodies. Vitamins that help set up a resistance to infection. And, last but not least, Horlicks is especially easy to digest. The young, delicate digestive system can handle Horlicks so much easier than ordinary milk. Get some Horlicks for those youngsters of yours. You can't do anything better for them. Your druggist has it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. Children like them both. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner learned yesterday that Grandpappy Spears was responsible for getting their money back from Squire Skimp on the fake diamond deal. And they've given the old fellow a permanent position in their jot down store as a reward. <laughs> Yesterday, Lum received a strange letter from Denver, Colorado. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the jot down store explaining it to Lum. Listen. Why, no, that's uh, what they call a chain letter, Lum. I've been reading about them in the paper, but that's the first one I've seen. Chain letter. Yeah, it just keeps going on and on like an endless chain. Well, it's done got here, though. Can't go no further now. Well, uh, you're supposed to make copies of this letter and send them to five of your friends. And then they'll send them to their friends, and they'll send them to their friends. And keep on and on till eventually, why, you ought to get 15,625 answers back, according to this here. You mean if I just send out five of them, I'll get over 15,000 answers for me? Well, that's the idea of it. If nobody breaks the chain, you will. And every one of them is supposed to have a dime in them, huh? Yeah, they're supposed to. If they all sent in, why, you'd get uh, uh, $1,562.50. And, and all it cost me is just 10 cents, huh? Yeah, yeah. All you're supposed to do is just send a dime to the name on the top of that list. Now, Granny, that looks like a good proposition to me. I'm going to get busy on that. I'll send you one of the letters, Dick, so you can get rich, too. <laughs> no, no, don't send me one. <laughs> I don't believe I want to get mixed up in the lump. Well, why not? Granny, just cost you a dime, and you make over $1,500 out yeah, of it. Well, you send them to somebody else, Lum. It sounds good and all that, but I've always figured a man's got to work for what he gets. These get-rich-quick schemes look awful good on paper, but they never pan out right. <laughs> Nobody's going to give you nothing, Lum. Well, if you don't want in on it, I won't send you one. See, I'll send one to Abner. I want to help him if I can. Let's see. Grandpappy Spears and Moe's Moots down to barber shop. He'll be a good one. Yeah, yeah, Moe's will take a chance on anything. <laughs> well, he or two. Folks take a chance when they go in that barber shop of his, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, especially if he gets to talking, don't pay any attention to what he's doing. Yeah, I got a shave down there the other day, and my face has been burning like fire ever since. <laughs> well, I won't let him shave me anymore, huh? Stop. Well, I never aim to let him shave me, neither. I just sitting there in the barber chair, listening to the Macmillan boys play the mouth organ guitar, and just dropped off to sleep, and when I woke up, he had me shaved and charged me ten cents for it. <laughs> This'll give me a chance to get that dime back off of it. Well, I don't see how in the world that you ever slept through him giving me a shave, Lump. Well, I don't either. He must have chloroformed me to do it, I think. <laughs> 
Well, a fellow needs an anesthetic, all right, when he shaves you. <laughs> Felt like somebody had took and beat my whiskers off with a wet rope. Well, I don't mind the razor as much as I do those hot towels he puts on your face. They're hot enough to scald a hole. Yeah, he can't hold them in his hand, they're so hot. He's got to drap them summer, so he just throws them over your face to get shut of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see now. Abner and Grandpap and Mose. Believe I'll send Doc Miller one. That's four. Uh, how about Uncle Henry Lunsford or Ezra Seastrom? Well, I don't know. It says to be sure whoever you send them to will send them on to somebody else. Caleb Weehunt, I believe, take a chance on this. Yeah, time. yeah, Caleb be a good one. Yeah. Well, that gets five of them right there. That's going to be right smart of a job to write all the... We ain't got a typewriter, neither, I grant it. I'm a notion to get Evelina to send them out for me. I'll tell you what I can do. Let's see. She ought to be home from school by this time. Yeah, what are you fixing to do there, Lum? Well, I just had an idea here. <laughs> I'm going to call her up. Well, uh, I expect I better be going, Lum. I've got to get back to the store. Well, don't rush off, Dick. Well, I'll see you later. Let me know how I came out all those letters. Yeah, I will, Dick. So long. I mean, hello. I'll see you later. No, wait a minute. Hello. I was just hollering at the uh, fella leaving the store here. Who is this? Sister Simpson? Uh, let me speak to Evelina, please, Mom. Well, this time, there's no deal over here. Well, I'll just drop in for a minute, Abby. Well, I'm sorry I missed you. Come back again. Yeah, I will. Sure. Hello? Oh, hello, Lum. How are you, Evelina? Why, well, all right, I reckon. Huh? Who'd you call me? I ain't talking to you, Abner. I'm talking to Evelina over the telephone here. Oh, oh excuse me. I, I never noticed you was talking at the phone. Oh, I was just talking to Abner here. Uh, Evelina, what I called you up about, I, I've got to make five copies of a letter. Uh, I just wondered if you couldn't get some of the scholars down there at school to write them for me. Well, you know, when you keep them in after school, you generally make them write some word or something 500 times, something like that. I just wondered if you couldn't make them copy this letter for me, as long as they've got to write something anyway. Oh, it's just a letter. I'll, I'll bring it over when I come over tonight. All right. <laughs> All right, much obliged to you. That'll be fine. Well, I'll see you tonight, then. All right. All right, Evelyn. Goodbye. Granny, that'll be a save no time. What's that, Mom? Well, I've got to make five copies of this letter I got yesterday, so Evelyn is going to have the young'uns down there at school do it for me. You mean the letter you got from your Uncle Lige out there in Denver, Colorado? Well, yeah, but that ain't from my uncle, though. Dick says that's a chain letter. Uh-huh. Said it's a what? A chain letter. All I got to do is send that fella on top a dime, and I get $1,562.50 back. You mean he'll send you that much money for just a dime? Well, yes. Well, order me a dime's worth two, then, while you're at it, Lon. Well, he don't exactly send it to you, Abner. See, the way this thing works, I've got to make five copies of this letter and send them to five of my friends, and each one of them does the same thing that I'm doing. Uh -huh. They send a top name on this list, a dime, and then put their name on at the bottom of the list. And when their name gets to the top of the list, why, they're supposed to get 15,625 letters, and each one's supposed to have a dime in it. Well, I do know. Well, uh, does it make any difference who you send them to? No, no, no. Send them to anybody you want to. They don't care who you send them to. I'm going to send you one. That shows right there it don't make no difference. Then you can send them to five of your friends. And a feller's supposed to make over $1,500 out of it, huh? That's what the letter says. Well, <laughs> I dog it. I believe I'll just send all five of mine to myself, then. To yourself? Why, yeah. If I can make $1,500 off of one, well, I'll make five times that much that way if I send them all to myself. Granny, wait a minute here. I hadn't thought about that. Why, sure. Well, I don't know where I want to send them out to somebody else or not. Well, well now, here now, Lum, you've got to send me one. You've done said that you would now. Well, I'll send you one, but you've got to send me one back. That'll make us even again. Yeah, well, I'll do that. Yes, sir, I I'd love to get in on that thing. <laughs> Dog, that's the easiest money I ever hear now. <laughs> of course, you've got to wait till your name gets to the top of the list before you start getting back any money, though. Well, I'll just put my name up there to start with. Put it on top instead of the bottom man. Well, now, wait a minute here. We're getting ourselves sort of mixed up here. Yeah. I don't believe that'll work. I'm feared we'd be sending ourselves $1,500 that way. Well, I couldn't send myself that much, for I ain't got it. Let me see now. 
four. I could owe myself part of it, I reckon. But that wouldn't do no good. I don't believe I'd ever pay it. I don't pay myself very good. Well, Abner, this thing's got me all mixed up, but I believe the best thing for us to do, just go ahead and send them out to her friends like the letter says. No use to make hogs out of ourselves. Hogs? Yeah, we ought to be satisfied with $1,500 for just a dime in there. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking, old um, I believe you give me an idea then. Give you an idea? Why, yeah. Uh, folks around here are sort of short on money, Lum, but they've all got more hogs than they know what to do with. Well, yeah. Well, why don't we start one of these here chain letter businesses and instead of sending a dime, send them a hog? Send hogs? Yes, sir. We, we could get that many hogs back to the dimes that way. Granny, wait a minute here. Now you have thought of something. I sure. <laughs> you know how many hogs we'd get out of that? 15,625. For the land, say. <laughs> and they ought to average up, uh, razorbacks and all, they ought to bring $3 a piece. Oh, they ought to do that. That'd be $45,000 worth of hogs. 45000 Yeah, hand me that letter there. Uh, uh, Granny's me and you starting a hog chain letter right now. See there, that ain't going to be no bother to change that where it says... Uh, rop one dime and a piece of paper and send it. We'll just change that to rop one hog. Well, we won't rop him up, but just send a hog. Yeah, yeah that'll help everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, every man, woman, and child in the United States will have 15,625 hogs apiece. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, now. Where in the world will they all come from? Now, I, I never know there was that many hogs. Well, I don't know about that. They just have to get them somewhere. All they got to do is just send one hog here or to be able to find just one. Oh, yeah, That's what right. I say. That'll run the price up on hogs. A farmer will get more for his hogs. And a railroad company will get to ship them all over the country. And feed prices will go up. Hey, grannies, talk about farm relief. Hey, grannies, this is it. <laughs> well, maybe a great idea, but we just hope we don't get one of those chain letters. 15,625 is a lot of hogs. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear the old fellows tonight, I'd like to say a few words about colds. I don't think there's anything more uncomfortable than an early summer cold. If you've ever had one, you'll know just what I mean. Now, I won't give you any set rule concerning colds, but I do say this. You can avoid colds to a large extent by building up resistance in advance. And there is no better way to build resistance than by drinking Horlicks regularly. Horlicks is rich in vitamins and bodybuilding elements, rich in the splendid nourishment of full cream milk and finest wheat and malted barley. So follow this advice. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. The whole family will like Horlicks. It'll help them as it's already helped hundreds of thousands of others all over the world. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the chain letter craze has finally hit Pine Ridge. And Lum and Abner have decided to go them one better by starting what they call the farm relief chain. Instead of sending money, everybody who receives one of their letters is supposed to respond by sending a hog. <laughs> the old fellows have figured out that they will receive over 15,000 hogs. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find them down at the Jotham Down store getting ready to receive them. Lum is talking over the telephone. Listen. Yeah, Esri, this here's Lum Enter. Yeah, have you ordered the lumber yet to remodel the store with? Well, good. Don't do it then. No, we ain't going to remodel. We're, we're going out of the store business. Yeah, we're going into hog business. Yes, hog business. Yeah, me and Abner started one of them chain letters, only instead of sending money, we're having everybody send one another a hog. Oh, you did? <laughs> Who'd you get yours from? Well, I do know. 
As he said, he got a letter a while ago from Grandma Matthews. Well. <laughs> well, we're going to have to use the money we're aiming on remodeling the store with to fence up some of the land to put them hogs in. Yeah, I might figure with you on doing uh, doing that job of fencing first, building a fence and all that. Well, that's right, you have. Says you got to build a fence for yourself first, for the hogs you're going to get. Well, uh, who you reckon we could get to do that, Esri? Uh, how about Luther Phillips? I know he does uh, carpentering. Uh, uh, carpent. He's a carpenter. Oh, he did. Well, I guess you'll have to build one for yourself then. Well, we'll find somebody, I reckon. All right. Much obliged, Esri. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Granny, them letters are getting scattered around in a hurry, ain't Oh, it? my, yes. Yeah, just quick as we sent them out just the afternoon while folks started passing them around. They've been going ever since. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just taking the town by storm. I never seen the whole community so excited over anything. Well, I could hear them all night long last night catching hogs. Every time I hear the hogs squeal, well, I know that somebody got a chain letter. Oh, that's all you can hear down on the streets today. Anybody that ain't got a hog trying to swap somebody out of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think that you ought to put our name up to the top of the list, though, instead of down at the bottom line. We'd have done had some hogs by this time, eh? Well, Abner, I explained that to you 40 times. If we'd have put our name at the head of the list, we'd have, we'd have just got five hogs. See, this way it takes a little longer for us to start getting any hogs, but the time our name reaches the top, it'll be multiplied to where we'll get... Uh, 15,625 hogs. Yeah, but I'm just afraid they'll run out of hogs before they get to us, Mom. There ain't that many in the community. Oh, well, by the time it gets to us, these letters will be all over the country. <laughs> we'll be getting hogs from every state in the union. Yeah, well, uh, read one of them letters again to me, Mom. I, I still can't get it in my head how we can send out one hog and get back over 15,000 of them. Well, it's just like that when we got from Denver where they wanted us to send them a dime, only we changed it up a little. See, instead of calling it the uh, Prosperity Club, like they did, I changed it to the Farm Relief Club. Yeah. Says, uh, this chain was started in the hope of bringing prosperity to everybody. With three, Within three days, make five copies of this letter, leaving off the top name and address, and adding your name and address at the bottom, and mail to five friends that you want to help. In omitting their top name, send that person one hog as a donation. In return, as your name leaves the top, you should receive 15,625 hogs. Is this worth a hog to you? See them first five letters we sent out, they'll all send a hog to the widow Abernathy. I thought I'd put her name at the top of the list, thought I'd help her out that much, you know. Yeah, well, she done got the hogs. Grandpappy Spears said that he'd take one over to her this morning, and she already had four then. And uh, with her just prized to death, you know, she didn't know what was going on. Folks started bringing them in there. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I ought to have telephoned her up and told her about it, so she'd been expecting them. I had a pen fixed for them. Yeah, well, that's what worried me about our too long. Where are we going to put them after we get them? Yeah, I was just thinking about that a while ago. That's going to take a lot of ground to keep that many hogs on, you know. Oh, well, me, I ain't got room on my whole farm for that many. Oh, Getting them hogs starts coming in here, land's going higher than a kite. I can tell that right now. Yeah, I believe it will, too. Might be a good idea for us to buy up a big batch of land right now and have it fenced so we'd be ready for them when they start coming in. Now, well, that's what I was thinking. And I know the place for them, too, if we can get it. That's down there in them pin oak bottoms along the river there. That ground in there ain't no count for nothing else, no way. Granny, that would be a good place to keep them. Who does that land belong to, anyway? Why, uh... Old Uncle Henry Lossford used to own it. I don't know where he's been keeping up the taxes on it or not. Well, yeah, I believe I'll telephone him up and see what he'll take for that. Might pick it up pretty cheap right now. Oh, yeah. Especially if he ain't heard about this hog boom we've started. Well, I reckon he'll be glad to get shut out of it, yeah. Lord, me, it ain't worth nothing to nobody. <laughs> I hope nobody else ain't beat us to it. Well, if he's got one of them letters, why, he'll more than likely be wanting to keep it for himself. That's the only trouble. Wait, wait a minute. Hello? Lunchford, this place? Uh, Uncle Henry? Uh, this is Lum Edwards talking. Oh, tolerably, how's yourself? You know, talk about everything before you get to the conversation. Uh-huh. Well, why, Uncle Henry, uh, what I called you up about, uh, do you still own that land down there along the river, them uh, pin oak flats in there? Uh-huh. Well, what would you ask the feller for that if, uh, if he was to go to a bite off of you? Four dollars an acre, huh? 
I don't know. In fact, it ain't worth too big. Uh, how much are they in that track? Eighty acres. That's right. That's uh, four times eighty is, uh... Just a minute. Let me figure that out in my head. Hand me a pencil there, Abner. Yeah, here. Eighty times four. Notes and notes and notes. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Thirty-two dollars. No, no, wait a minute. Three hundred and twenty. Hello? Uh, tell you what we'll do, Uncle Henry. We'll give you three hundred dollars for it. That's not ten times what it was. All right, just make out a deed to me and Abner. We're in partners on it. All right, you fetch it over here. We've got the money whenever you deliver the deed. Well, no no backing out on us now. We're just, we're counting on it. All right, Uncle Henry. All right. Goodbye. Doggy, that's a pretty big price to be paying for that kind of land, ain't it, Mom? Yeah, it's more than it's worth, all right. But I figured we'd better buy it while we could before somebody else beat us to it. Oh, well, we'll have more money than we know what to do with anyhow. Why, right, of course. Now then, we've got to buy some wire and build a fence around it. Yeah, you know, these hogs ain't all profit. I found that out. Yeah, you ain't complaining about spending a little money to fix a place to keep 15,000 hogs that's been given to you, are you? Well, no, I ain't a complaining. <laughs> You said I never stopped to think that we'd have to fix a place to keep them. I expect we can get the Macmillan boys to build that fence for us. Yeah. Oh, well, that is if they ain't got one of them chain letters themselves. That's the trouble. Uh, Grannies, we already got this fence built before we sent them letters out. Why, sure we had. We already thought... Well, yonder comes Grandpap now, huh? Yeah. Uh, Granny, <laughs> that about decided he took the day off. Well, he said when he left at noon that he wouldn't be back for a while, that he... Had to patch up a fence over at his place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, getting ready for his hogs, I reckon. See, he was second on the list on that letter. Yeah. He'd get, uh, let's see, he ought to get 25 altogether, that is, if nobody don't break the chain. Well, come in, Grandpap. We'd about give you up for getting back. Well, it's taking me longer than I counted on. Folks started bringing hogs in over there, and I had to show them where to put them. Yeah, uh, how many have you got so far? Well, I had 25 whenever I left over there just now. Well, I do know. Well, that's all you're going to get, Grandpa. 25 is all you could get. Yeah. Well, that's enough. I've got more now, and I know what to do with. I don't know where in the world I'm going to get feed from. Feed? Why, yes, they've got to eat. 25 hogs can eat a feller out of house and home in no time. I had doggies. Wait a minute here, Lom. There's something we hadn't counted on. Where in the world will we ever get enough feed to feed 15,000 hogs with? Granny, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, we better stop them letters before them hogs start coming in here. That's what we better do. There ain't enough feed in this whole part of the country to feed that many hogs. Oh, my goodness. Look, the honor coming in here. Well, for the last... Cedric, what are you doing bringing that hog in the store here? Well, it belongs to you and Mr. Lum. <laughs> I got a chain letter, and your names was on top of the list, and... Uh... The letter told me to bring you home, so I done it. <laughs> well, you just take it right back where you got it. We've decided that we don't want in on it. Well, there's a whole bunch of fellas on the way over here with them. See, yonder comes Luther Phillips and Luke Spears, both leading hogs now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look here, Lom. Look here there for the wait, land. Wait a minute. Be quiet, Abby. I've run. got an idea. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Just leave the hog here, Cedric. Feeding them hogs ain't going to be no trouble at all. My grannies, we'll start another chain letter on feed. Have everybody send one another a bushel of corn, and that way we'll get over 15,000 bushels of corn. <laughs> uh, Grannies, I know they was. Well, now they'll have to find a place to store that corn. <laughs> there seems to be no end to a chain letter. you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. But first, in case there are still some of Lum and Abner's overweight friends who haven't heard about the Horlick weight control plan, I'd like to say a few words about that. As some of you know, in a recent test in Chicago, women lost, on an average, more than three pounds a week using this plan. 
so it's well worth your attention. Briefly, the plan is this. To drink a good glass full of Horlicks malted milk at noon instead of a heavy, hard-to-digest meal. Horlicks is a well-balanced food, one that is sufficiently nourishing and sustaining to take the place of heavier food. But, and this is the point, the use of Horlicks avoids taking the excess calories of the heavy lunch. And that's how you lose your weight. You cut down on the calories. If you're at all overweight, try this marvelous plan. Get a package of Horlicks malted milk from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And start right away. Remember, the quicker you start, the quicker you lose those excess pounds of yours. And at the same time, save your health, time, and money. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, you know, Lum and Abner have started what they call the farm relief chain letter. Instead of sending money, everyone who receives one of their letters is supposed to respond by sending a hog. <laughs> Now they have started a corn chain letter, having everyone send a bushel of corn to feed the 15,000 hogs they hope to receive. Well, yesterday, their first hog arrived from the chain letter. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Cedric Weehunt down at the Jotham Down store. Lum seems to be engrossed in a book just now. Listen. You, you ought to get yourself one of these books too, Cedric. Uh, what's that, Mr. Lum? Why, it's called a care and feeding of hogs. Tells all about how to cure the cholera and different diseases. But if gets 15,000 hogs, he, he's got to know how to take care of them. And cholera break out amongst them, liable to take them on off before you can get them stocked. Well, I, I'm getting a little uneasy about me getting any hogs, Mr. Lum. Uh, I brung you fellas over one yesterday and I passed out five letters and ain't got back none yet. Oh, well, you've got to wait for your... Name gets up to the top of the list. You get them all right. Here's a couple of days before we start getting ours, you know. Well, sir, I've sat right here and watched folks going by the store here all day long, leading the hogs. I never seen nothing like it. Oh, I never did, neither. There was wagons and buggies lined up there in front of Mr. Abner's house, clean down to the end of the fence a while ago. Uh, how come they're, they're taking them all over to his house? I thought you and him was partners on this deal. Well, we're just leaving them over there temporary till we can get a fence built around some of the land we bought this day. Well, I've never seen so many hogs in my life. Wait a minute, that's our ring. <clears throat> Hello? You can jot them down, store. I'm Edwards talking. Oh, well, howdy, Charlie. <laughs> Do what? Oh, why, yeah, I reckon we could spare one. Oh, I don't know, Charlie, about three or four dollars, I reckon. You have? <laughs> well, I reckon they're getting pretty scarce for now. Mm-hmm. Well, we're keeping them over at Abner's place temporary. Abner's over there now. Just go over there and tell him I said to let you have one. You can just pay him there. Huh? Oh, it is. <laughs> well, there ain't no use for you to carry it clean over to your place and then have to carry it back again. No, if you're getting a hog to give to us, why, just drop by there and point out the one you want to give us and just leave the money. Yeah, save you a lot of bother. All right, Charlie. <laughs> oh, not at all, not at all. Glad to help you. Goodbye. Granny, that gives me a good idea. Here, we've been worrying about how we're going to get shut of them hogs. Uh, Granny, we can just sell them to these folks that's just now getting these chain letters. Charlie Luttrell said he'd looked all over the country trying to buy a hog from somebody. Yeah, before long, I bound you they'll be bringing a fancy price, all right. Scarcity they're getting. We've given away all we had over at the place. Ma and Pa and all us children's every one got one of them chain letters. We give away 11 hogs just evening. Yeah, the trouble is, see, all the hogs is getting concentrated in one place, sort of. Those fellas that's up at the head of the list are getting a corner on them. Well, yonder comes Mr. Abner now. Where? Yeah, I grant it. Now he won't be there when Charlie gets there. Well, I reckon Charlie will bring the money on down here at the store if ain't nobody there. Now, yeah, wait a minute. That's our ring again. Uh, no, Cedric, you, you run over there and wait till Charlie gets there and take the money for her. Hello? It's a jot him down store. I'm Edwards talking. Well, how are you, Bessie? Why, yes, I did. I told him just a while ago we'd let him have one. Why, yes, I guess we could spare another and all right. 
Three dollars. That's what I told Charlie he could have one for. Oh, anyone you want. It don't matter with us. We got so many. Uh, Cedric Weehunt will be over there. Just pay him the money and tell him I said to let you have one. Uh, Cedric, uh, Bessie Gantlin will be over there after a hog in a minute. Now, let her have one, too. Now, yeah, mind out where you're going at, Cedric. You'll run over Excuse somebody. me, Mr. Abner. Excuse me. All worry. right, Mr. Lum, I'll just stay over there for a while. All right, doggy Lum, something's got to be dead about them hogs. Wait hogs. a minute, Abner. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. All right, Bessie, you can just go over there and pick out any one you want. Oh. Uh-huh. If you see anybody else that's wanting to buy one, why, tell them we've got plenty and we'd be glad to sell them. All right. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Don't mention it. Goodbye. I grant it, Abner. I got an idea now that is an idea. Yeah, I got one, too. We's worrying about where we's going to sell them hogs. Why, granted, we'll just sell them out to these folks that's just now getting these chain letters. Hogs are getting scarce around here. Yeah, they're getting scarce everywhere except over at my place. I've never seen so many hogs in my life. Well, fine. We're getting them everywhere. Why, it looks like a picnic ground over there. There's been a steady stream of folks over there all day long bringing hogs. Well, I do know. And yeah, they ain't using no judgment, neither. Huh? Why, they must in a hurry. Why, they ain't asking me where I want them put. They just walk up there and dump them over the fence and leave. They're just tearing up the place. Oh, yeah. They've got in Elizabeth's garden and rooted it all up. And they've got in the barn and bedded up under the house and in the house. Why, they hogs everywhere you turn them. And Elizabeth just put her foot down, too, said we can't bring another one on the place. She has? Yes, sir. Well, I think this idea of mine will get rid of them pretty fast, however. I'll paint a big sign saying, hogs for sale, get your hogs here, we've got them, and all that stuff. Well, we have. And we can just hire Cedric to stay over there and sell them when folks comes after them. Well, I've been turning folks down all day. I never knowed we wanted to sell them. Why, sure, we may as well sell them. Ain't no use to keep them over and have to feed them. By the first of the week, we ought to be getting some corn back from them corn chain letters we sent out last night. Yeah. But the main thing I come over here for long, we've got to figure out some rules. Some rules? Yeah, they're running in all sorts of things on us over there. Eli Whitten brought a little pig over there a while ago that weren't two weeks old. Well, that letter says hog. That's what I told him, but he said he'd look the whole county over, and that's the nearest he could come to find one. Well, from so here out, you, you can just sell him one of them we've got over there. And Luke Spear, that crazy idiot, he couldn't find a hog, so he went down to the butcher shop and come over a while ago with two hams and two shoulders and some backbone and spare ribs and some sausage and head cheese and a jar of pickled pig feet. Said that weren't a live hog, but that it was all there. Well, for goodness sake, bound dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, us selling them will put a stop to all that. I've done sold, too. Two? Yeah, Charlie Luttrell and Bessie Gatlin will both be over after one. I told them just pick out any one they wanted for $3. Yeah, well, I better get back over there then, Lump, for I know that Charlie Luttrell. He'll about pick out the biggest one we've got over there. Well, it don't matter none about the one he picks out, for our name's on top of the list of the letter he got, so he'll give it right back to us, you know. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> well, I hope he picks out that big polling chiny we got if he's going to give it back to us. He's an extra. Well, it don't make no difference. Just let him pick out anyone he wants to. You mean let him pick out one of them little runts and give us? Abner, he ain't even going to take it away from the place over there. He's just going to point out the one he wants and hand you three dollars. So what difference does it make? Well, none, except I just love to get as good a one as we could out of the deal. Now, don't you go over there and get in no argument with Charlie. Things is running too nice now. <laughs> Granted, we're going to have more hogs and money, and we'll know what to do with here in a few days. Yeah, a special hog. Oh, Swan, I never would have believed there was that many of them. I don't know how many we've got now, but it looks like we've got a heap more than 15,000 over there. Don't reckon nobody's been slipping some in on us, do you? Slipping some in on us? Yeah, bringing us two instead of one. Oh, for goodness sake, of course not. Well, I've been watching them pretty close, but... Only trouble, I don't know who all the letters are sent to, and I just have to take their word for it. Well, there comes Dick Huddleston, young. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. First, I know Dick's the only one in the whole community here that ain't taking no part in this chain letter business. Yeah, Dick's awful old timey, Mom. Backwards about taking up newfangled ideas this way. Well, it's a shame, nice of fellers he is. 
All has been about the best fixed financial is there a feller in town till this thing started. Yes, he has. Now he won't have nothing compared to the rest of us when it's all over. Yeah, I bound you he'll have his regrets over it, too. Yeah. He'd be coming around here in a few days saying, Lum, I wish I'd have listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tried to get him to let me send him a letter, and he wouldn't take it. Yeah. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick, come in. Well, yeah, howdy, fellas. Say, uh, Ezra Seastrunk must be at the top of the list now. I come by his place just now, and there must have been a hundred people standing around there with hogs to get him. Oh, well, I do. <laughs> it's taking the community by storm. i never seen nothing like it. <laughs> Everybody you see has got a hog taking it to somebody. Yeah. And letters, that little post office of mine down there is just swamp with them. Well, I do know. Now, that's what I come over to see you fellas about, too. Who started this hog chain letter, anyway? Why, me and Abner did. Yes, sir. We're responsible for all this excitement. Yeah, and we started another chain letter last night, having everybody send a bushel of corn to one another, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that way everybody will get feed for their hogs. Well, I hate to say it, fellas, but I, I'm just afraid that somebody's liable to get in some trouble over this. Trouble? Yes, I had a letter from the post office authority in Washington, uh asking all the postmasters to make an investigation, and if they can find out who's been starting these chain letters around over the country, why, they're going to prosecute them for using the mails to defraud. Hmm. <laughs> well, we're afraid our old friends have started something now that they can't stop. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Attention, everybody. Hundreds of our friends have written in requesting a photograph of Lum and Abner. We're glad to announce that we now have a limited quantity of 8 by 10 pictures autographed by Lum and Abner themselves. These pictures show the old fellows both in character, just as you've always pictured them to yourself over the radio, and also as they appear in real life. If you want one, and I know you will, just send in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or large package of Horlick's malted milk, and we'll send you one right away. Mail your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Got that? But remember this, folks. We have only a limited number of these pictures, and this offer will be withdrawn soon. So to make sure of getting one of these grand souvenirs, I suggest you send your wrapper in right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner learned the other day that it was unlawful to start a chain letter. But only after the hog chain letter that they'd started and spread like wildfire. <laughs> well, now the old fellows are trying their best to get the thing stopped. However, they're finding it much easier to start than it is to stop. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jot'em Down store. Lum is talking over the telephone. Listen. Uh, Luther? Uh, this here's Lum Edder. Why, oh, tolerably well. How's yourself? Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I must be ailing. Why, well, Luther, what I called you up about, uh, you got one of them hog chain letters that me and Abner started, didn't you? Ah. Uh -huh. yeah, you was one of them that give us a hog, wasn't you? I know he was. I just left him. Yeah, well, Abner thought he recollected seeing you bring one over there. Yeah, I brought a little four and shiny over. Well, I wish you'd go over there at his place and pick it out and take it back home. Yeah, yeah we're giving them all back. Yeah, we we found out uh, that that uh, it's again the law to start them chain letters that way. Why, using the mail for defraud or something like that? Dick Huddleston was a telling us. Yes, sir. Huh? You have? Well, for the land's sake. He says he's got over 400 hogs just in today himself. Uh, his name must be up at the top of the list. On this time. How's that, Luther? 
Well, we just figured if everybody would take their hog back, he'd stop this chain letter we started and get us out of trouble. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, all right, Luther. I don't know as I blame you much. No, I don't reckon they could get you. You never started it. All right. Goodbye. What'd you say, Lon? Just what I thought he'd say. Huh? Just like all the rest of them said he didn't want his hog back. Looks like we've started something here we can't stop. Well, I don't know what to do. Uh, got to get them hog back somewhere or other. That penitentiary is staring us right smack in the face. Trouble is, everybody around here knows that me and you's the only ones that can get in any trouble over it, and they ain't trying to help us. Why, no, they don't care where we go to the penitentiary or not. I was talking to Jerry Hausner about it, and he just come right out flat-footed and said he wouldn't have his home back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's the stubbornest fellow I ever seen anyway. I think he's kind of crazy myself. Yeah. About the best thing for us to do is just get a truck somewhere and load them hogs up and drive over their places of a night and unload them where they belong into their feller or not. Yeah, but the trouble is, Lom, we don't know where they come from. There were so many folks bringing hogs over there for a day or two that I couldn't keep up with them. I don't know who brung them and who didn't. Yeah, that's right. We ought to made out a list of everybody that brung us one, then we'd have known who to take them back to. Yeah, but we never know then that we'd want to give them back. Yeah. They never knowed what they were doing, did they? Huh? Oh, nothing. Jenny to wish them hogs could talk and tell us where they live at. <laughs> Might talk pig Latin to them, now. <laughs> Do what? Oh, pig Latin, you know, egg pig Latin, Oh, for goodness sake. Here I'm trying to study up some way to keep us out of the penitentiary, and you sit around and think up a bunch of foolish stuff. Oh, well, I was just joshing off. I know better. I know that they couldn't understand that kind of talk. I can't hardly understand it myself. I know I've got more sense than pigs. I oh. wish I'd never heard of a chain letter. They say some fella out in Colorado started them things. Yeah. That yeah. is, for money. Of course, this was our idea changing it to a hog chain letter. Well, what are we going to do, Lom? I told Elizabeth I'd be back in a few minutes, and she said if I don't get them hogs away from over there by this evening, that she's going to run me and them both off. Well, you better get started running, then, for we ain't going to get them away from there today. I can tell you that right now. Well, uh, why can't we just go ahead and put a fence around that 80 acres we bought down on the river the other day, Lom, and turn them loose on that? Well, what's the use of going to the expense of fencing that place up if we ain't going to keep the hogs? Well, we've got to put them somewhere. They're just ruining our place over there. Looks like a cyclone had hit it. I've got Cedric staying over there now to keep them out of stuff, but I don't think he's able to do it. There's so many of them. Yeah, Granny, there's another thing. We ought to quit selling them over there. My sure, that'll be worse off than ever if we don't uh, stop taking folks' money for them hogs that we got that's supposed to be again the law. If we start trying to get them hogs back, no telling where we would find them at. I know. They and change hands 15 or 20 times by now. Selling them for $3 and no telling what they'd want for them back. No, no. Maybe we could start an unchained letter. Do what? An unchained letter. Start a chain letter where everybody would give somebody a hog or have to go get it back. Yeah. That way, eventually, the hogs will all get back to where they started from. Yeah, that's a good idea if they'll do it. Well, it ought to be a heap easier to get somebody to go get one back than it was to get them to give one away. Yeah, but what about that using a mail to defraud that Dick was talking about? Now, let's don't get no more of these things started through the mail, though. Well, it ought to be again a law to start an unchained letter. Well, you better ask Dick about that. Granny, wait a minute here. That is a good idea. That's a good idea even if it won't work. A good idea if it won't work. Why, sure. That way we won't have to send the hogs we got back to where they come from, because, uh, well... Like if they was to send us to the penitentiary for 10 years for starting them chain letters, it ought to take about 10 years off for starting an unchained letter, so we can't get no more trouble on the deal. We just break even. Yeah, well, I'd rather stop fooling with these chain letters, Lom, before we end up on a chain gang somewhere. <laughs> yeah. We're what you call fugitives from a chain letter, ain't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think about it, though, I don't believe that unchained letter business will work very well anyhow, have I? I don't need that. See, we never got all the 15,625 hogs we're supposed to get. We might have to go out here and buy up to a 3,000. That is, if we start an unseen letter and run it backwards that way. Well, oh, my goodness, I know we don't want to do that, but I'm have to buy up a bag. No, if we can just get them hogs over there back to whoever gave them to us, I hope I never see another one as long as I live. Yeah, but 
That ain't as easy done as it sounds, old arm, giving them back. Reckon them hogs would know their way home if we were to just turn them loose. You mean just turn them loose and, and let them go home by themselves? Yeah. Dogs and cows and stuff like that will. They will. Cows will always come in at milking time, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know about hogs, though. I reckon they would. Well, we'd get shut of them anyway. Yeah. If the post office department comes down here to investigate who started these chain letters, they couldn't prove nothing on us if we never had no hogs over there. Well, if we don't do something about it pretty quick now, Lum, we won't have a chance to turn them loose for Elizabeth's going to do it first. Yeah. I believe that's the best thing for us to do, Abner. Just open them gates and let them go. Yeah, I better answer the phone. I think that's all right. It's just wrong. Now. It was. I never paid no attention yeah, to it. Yeah, I believe it was. If that ain't none of the post office authorities here now. Hello? Well, tell me who you want first. Yeah, that's who it is. This what it was. Give him well, a man. Who is this talking? More like maybe a president. Or You're sure about that? Uh, well... All right, yeah, this is half of us. This is Lum Eddards talking. Oh, you know what he's meant. <laughs> You've got what? Oh, my goodness alive. Abner, that's the express company in there at the county seat. Says we've got 36 hogs in there at the express hall. You mean that they broke out and went clean in there? No, no, there is some that's been shipped to us. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold the receiver a minute. Uh, me and Mr. Peabody's will have to have a little meeting over this to decide what to do. What, what, what do you mean? What, what do you want to have a meeting for, Long? Well, if these hogs start coming in from out of town, we're into it now, sure enough. Well, just tell him that we don't want them. Tell him he'll have to ship them right back to whoever they come from. Tell him we've got more hogs now and we know what to do with it. Trouble is, we'll have to pay the express back on them. Well, I'd a heap rather do that than go to the penitentiary. Yeah, I don't know. Wait a minute. I'll find out how much it'll cost to ship them back. Yeah, tell him we never ordered them in the first place. Hello? Mr. Uh, Mr. Express, uh, uh, why couldn't we just leave the hogs in the crates they come in and ship them back to whoever it was sent them to us? Uh huh. Well, how much would that cost? Just the same as it costs to ship them to us, huh? All right. Well, uh, how much would that cost us now altogether? Well, figure it up and call us back, will you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Much obliged to you. Lord, he's me, Abner. That's going to cost a fortune to send all them hogs back. It is. He says some of them from New Brasky and California and Pennsylvania and all over the United States. Well, for goodness sake. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Uh, what's that Cedric doing coming over here? I told him to stay over at the place. Hey, Mr. Abner, you better get on over at your place. What's the matter, Cedric? The hogs ain't got out, have they, Cedric? Well, I wouldn't worry about that, Mom. He's aiming on turning them loose anyhow. No, but uh, your names must be at the top of the corn list now for... Folks is bringing corn over there so fast I don't know where to put it at. Corn? Hey, Granny Zabner, I forgot about that dead blame corn letter we started. Now we're into it showing up. <laughs> it was a bad day for Lum and Abner when the chain letter idea hit Pine Ridge. This is Carlton Brickert speak, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>